What's up, nerds? So guys, um, I'm gonna do this one a little different than what I normally do. Normally I have a video, I shot like an intro and I have an exit and all that stuff. Um, this one I'm doing this kind of format. Uh, I'm gonna talk to the camera, I'm gonna shrink myself down into the corner and just kind of commentate on everything. Um, kind of a fun way to experience this. Uh, this was a day that we were pre-running for Taste of Dakar and things just didn't go well. Um, and I would basically have to throw this footage away. So this is all bonus track stuff because of uh, we were scouting for a route. We thought that we could get around this mountain um, in between these two mountains and have things work out. And it just didn't, um, as you'll see. Uh, I've got Josh Jones with me. He's a really great rider. And then um, I had Matt Carmen with me. And he's like super rad, dude. He's a tiger guy. Um, great spokesman for adventure riding, great spokesman for Triumph Tigers, uh, or Triumph in general. Um, he totaled his tiger out, like, pretty much the weekend after, uh, this, this whole thing went down. He, uh, he had a pretty bad crash. But, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack open a beer. And, uh, follow along with this whole little thing we got going on. And, um, yeah, I'll commentate as we go. Here we go. Um... Yeah, yesterday we got we got pretty annihilated. Uh, Josh had to dig me out from under my bike. This is that part where I get buried under my bike. I almost had heat exhaustion. Had heat exhaustion, borderline heat stroke. I think we're gonna die out here. You know, so far the bikes have been flawless. Uh, communication systems have been, you know, irreplaceable. Being able to talk to each other and try to get out of some stuff. So, you know, that's the equipment that we're using and the bikes. And I mean, for this stock R12. 50 GSA. I mean, I made it through some stuff yesterday that if I knew it was there, I wouldn't have went there and it made it through. It, it'd have been tough to get through on a If we knew any of this was there. Yeah, like a dirt bike would have been would've challenging. There. And so yesterday was just a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's check it out and just, you know, follow along for the ride. I hate saying that crap. <laughs> so BMW-y. Uh, this is the first day that Matt, Matt came out oh, and met up with us. Are you getting some gas for your little baby you know, bike? Um, I got little legs. Wait for me. And so we basically tried to kill him, which we were almost successful. And we stopped at this family dollar to get water, um, right, which a great move. Go. And then uh, when we were leaving the parking lot, we saw this lady. Um, yeah, she's driving like a sports car, but dude, check out this neck brace. Yeah, Dodge Challenger, like all custom down. But dude, I don't know how she got that neck brace, but hell yeah. Um, this is me standing up with the R1250, man. Just. At 100 miles an hour on tarmac, no problem. I think if we got this right, these two ridges call two fingers. This is Josh's helmet cam. It's a Senna. We'll call them the two fingers because they look like fingers on the map. Yeah, you can see it there. And there's just two ridge lines that go down this, and there's a trail that goes right smack in the middle, which is pretty epic. Look at this mm. scrub angle, Matt, top left, like just coming in off the trail, dude. Like. 30 degree angle. Such a goon. <laughs> so I sent Matt and Josh in on this trail and I thought we could originally get in there and then back out, uh, or all the way through, but it turns out it hit, it hit a dead end, so. Over there, we actually doubled back here. to the road. This was well, the was very start of it. Aerial, but and it was already right here, bad news. Supposedly. Looks like it might, uh... You know, that's part of the scouting thing we use. Big rocks. Your satellite and, uh, you know, I'm using uh, an app called Locust Pro and then GPX File Viewer on my Android phone. Super powerful apps. And then uh, Matt used the Reaver app a bunch. Super helpful to have all these people with all their navigation units. I also had that uh, BMW unit. Uh, here's Matt signaling me to go buy them. Uh, and then I locked Josh into what I call video game mode. Dude, the GoPro Hero 8 with the stabilization on is amazing. Um, audio is not that great because you can't plug a mic into it unless you have like that adapter and it's a pain. Uh, this is all Josh here with the Senna uh, Tensi Evo. Cool. I think we want to stay to the right here. I can kind of see. Yeah, I can't see anything that way. You know, all these trails here are like. Um, a little soft, but this is uh, January. Yeah. In April, when we were supposed to have a taste of Dakar, okay, it would have so been I really think what soft. We're gonna, do is we're gonna go, we're gonna stay with what we're on. We're actually gonna intersect, I think, in between that one and that one. 
There's one that cuts to the right, right? Yeah, no, it cuts to the left. And then we follow that and then it cuts to the right. And that's where we'll cross 95 and we'll try to get into Jeez, because I want to be I want to I want the route to be freaking awesome. I think this is the part where we do some little exploring. So here we are in this like section just to get from uh, Gold Point and Bonnie Claire, which is an area on the map you'd see if you pulled up Gold Point. We're trying to get to uh, 95, and then once we get to 95, we have the option to go right or left. We go right first, we hit a fence, uh, we decide not to do it, we go to the left. Um, this is a little break we took before we actually hit 95, and uh, you know, self-explanatory here. Okay, so we just ran through this whole, uh, this whole section back here. Super good. Definitely a good, probably like almost hard level kind of track. Not impossible, but like that'll be a challenge for some people. And we're headed over in this direction right now, and everybody's having a little snack. Birthday cake. Go, Josh. It's your birthday. Got your car fixed. Oh my God, you guys are so BMW y. Wait, what? <laughs> Why don't you just get a GS, dude? You do all the BMW things, you dance stuff. Hey, dancing is for people who have songs in their heart, okay? I mean, I, I don't know what those signs mean. Let's go down this way and see if we can get in that way because that was the original plan. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Matt, we're yeah. going to go this way a couple kilometers okay. and then turn in and see if we can get to this mountain the way we want to. Yeah, here's. I mean, that BMW is just a freight train, man. It just handles so good, goes down the road so good. So really, really enjoyed having that bike for this particular mission. Yeah, I think once we get in this gate, but if we can get in the gate back that way, yeah. we'll go that way. You know, so this is some of the stuff that like, when you're pre-running, you have to go back and forth and decide like, hey, is this doable or not doable? Will people be able to get through here or not? Um, really helpful to, uh, to have is. somebody like Matt and Josh with you. Okay. They're both navigation pros. This. Matt's done a ton of BDR routes by himself Ooh. or like with a small group and he like beauty. leads. Okay, looks like we're gonna have some gates here. To take take the notice, no signs on this fence whatsoever. When you come up on a gate, yeah, just you open it up, normal, send your buddies through, and then you close yeah, it back cattle up. Cattle gate thing, go through, not a big deal. Just make sure you put it back. Um, you, you know, not that Oops. it's... Good eye spot in this gate. You know, territory that you're not allowed to ride on. And then this area that yeah. we go into, dude, phenomenal. It's like you start getting into this road and it's all crushed gravel. And it's just like like fresh powder, that first that first run down the mountain kind of feel. And we're like, dude, this is magic. Like we we actually pulled over and talked about it. We're like, this is the best shit we've ever ridden. That mountain way out on this scene right now is that Stonewall Mountain. I almost think we want to go this way. Yeah. Because then we got to cross a wash. Okay. Let's give it a... We got to get around that mountain, right? That mountain, I think so. Go, go and we want to go to that. Yeah, we got to get there. It looks like that's the way we want to go. Yeah, yeah. Straight left. You follow it, there's yep. this ridge here, and then it's straight down into this lake bed thing. Okay, what if we went straight? Uh, it goes into, comes up and curves around into these mountains. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. we'll go that way. Okay. This gets, this has got a lot more whoops in it, okay. and like terrain elevation changes, so the speed's not going to be as high. Right. So this is where we're trying to decide whether we should go into that mountain range, or if we should stay low from it. Um, the idea behind staying low is that you're less close to the big stuff that was washed off of this mountain over the years. So, uh, you know, erosion and earthquakes or whatever bring a bunch of rocks down from the mountain. So if you kind of stay away from the base, it's a good thing. Um, what you start getting into is like these sections that seem flat or look flat on the satellite. They're just not. Um, but we're still a few miles out from there. We're just trying to get over to the edge of this mountain that you can see right there. Challenging. Hey. Okay, so here we are in the bottom of this wash. Yeah, we're in it. Easy. <laughs> now he's 
we start getting into like some creek beds or like old creek beds or washouts. Okay, uh, you know, still some road tracks here. So like we're thinking like, okay, cool, this is hard. We're getting harder, but this is fine. This is actually what we're looking for for this route because like I'm planning it and we want people to have a good time. But then things start getting like a little bit more difficult, but it's still cool because we still have a route to follow. Matt's a really good rider, picks really good lines. Uh, he's got a Dunlop 606 on the rear of that bike because it has a narrower rim. Uh, that he, he bought that set of rims from uh, my buddy James Mellinger out at Triumph Seattle, so shout out to those guys. Um, he's able to run the really narrow 17-inch Dunlop 606. It's only a 130, uh, so it's pretty narrow. Helps the bike turn in, and it's also like probably the best aggressive 17-inch tire you can get, but it, at that width, there you, go, Matt. you can't get it at a 150. Yeah, like I wouldn't run a 130 on a 150 so rim. Now here we are, just getting to the base of this mountain, and you know, bust through some some rocks, get to a point where we can stop and like kind of, okay, kind of regroup. Let's take a second, see if we can find a road here. Yeah, dude, this is a workout. What do you think, Matt? Do you you see this where we're at, right? Yeah. Just dropping a few waypoints to mark some of that. Yeah. 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 Pretty good, right? Yeah. Dude, this is... Look at us. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're getting there. We're having an adventure. Now this is where, like... Yeah, I almost feel like this would be a better way to go. Basically all the roads end, so we're done on as far as roads go. We're still hopeful that we can ride some stuff, but... Uh, it all not. basically just kind of disappears at this point. Okay, had to get a new camera battery in there. Here we go again. So this is the point where I'm starting to think, oh shit, in my head because I'm supposed to be scouting a route and like some things can still be a route, but I mean, for the most part, the route is shot. Like this is expert. We're getting expert level on an adventure bike. It's getting pretty rough. So I'm starting to get nervous about like the project and, and everything that I'm supposed to be doing. You know, but I'm still in this creek bed. If I drop the GPX tracks in there, which I was doing, you know, maybe we can still salvage this route if there's a little bit of off-road. And I look back and I can't even see anybody, um, which I'm, I'm partially responsible for Matt and Josh at this point because, you know, we're, we're scouting for my my project with Alt-Rider. And it just seems to be like, shit, man, like we're in, we're in trouble. Like we're now getting in the territory where like, if you don't have a 690, you really shouldn't be back in this. And here's how desolate everything is. Like everything's super just desolate, man. Everything's out in the open, like, and all of a sudden like we're off track and this doesn't feel like a, a ride anymore. And yet that's still Stonewall Mountain all the way out there. And now here we're coming into some stuff that like looks flat on the map like from satellite view because you can't see the contrast you don't see shadows but you know it's it's either dead ass flat or it starts to get a little little hilly which you'll see in a little bit oh, let's take a look and see where we're at oh my god now I'm just picking a spot to stop and there's nobody behind me, you know, it takes a while for Matt and Josh to catch up. Um, if you're on a group ride like this, try to all start at the same time, it keeps that spacing down, you know. If you wait 30 seconds to start going, you're now 30 seconds behind. Yeah. I mean, like, you have one mess up out here, this will be bad. Yeah. You ain't getting a truck out here. I think we should have just made a left to get to here and then it would have been or right around Stonewall, we would have been all right. What do you mean a left around here? When we got to, to the highway, if we would have made a left, oh, it would have put us on the other side of all this. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So you're saying we should have skipped it. Yeah, it I think sucks, we... Because that stuff up to there was good. Oh, amazing. 
Yeah. How do you think Josh is doing? Pretty good. He's working. How you doing, bud? We had a little fumble risky and that one little Okay. Drop dip and the cross the wash, but Okay. This is Josh's camera here having a little as he called it a fumble ruski. But these these drops like this can can be a big determining factor whether you have enough energy to finish the ride. Um, Josh had a couple falls, I didn't, you know, Matt didn't, and like that makes a big difference. Um, here's where some of the washes start to happen. Uh, you know, we're at the 14 minute mark now, so yeah, I mean like I'm still thinking this is a salvageable route for expert riders. Like, you know, we tell everybody, hey, you, you know, you better have your shit together. But then you come into stuff like this and you're like, well, you know, I'm gonna ride this out. And we're, we're starting to ride around um, different washes and and where, where things are like elevation changes. Cause that's the one thing adventure bikes don't do well is the big elevation changes. This was this was actually a pretty big drop off here, so I had to like pick my line. So I was, later on, you'll see where I try to tell Josh which way to go, and he doesn't listen. Aspy, I think. So we want to drop in here and go that way a little bit. Yeah, I would cross over. I think over there is just like what we got now, which is doable. Not great, but doable. Yeah. I think once we get down in there, we'll see a lot of big rocks. Okay. So that's my bike there that I borrowed from BMW. Now you need Here's to go this way, to Josh. Josh what to do. Or don't listen to me. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he missed every hand signal I gave him. You know, here you can hear Josh kind of huffing and puffing. This is because he has a bunch of layers on because he thinks it's going to be the desert. <laughs> he gets cold easy, but he got his ass smoked this day. Well, shit. You doing okay? Yeah. Okay. I could ride this. Can you? Yeah. I wonder if we should go up there or no. I wonder if we should go up there. Towards the mountain, like all the way down there? Not all the way, but just some of the way or no, just see do how it. this all looks smooth in here. Like it just, just looks it. like we can get through this stuff, you know? All right. And, and so as we keep going and like we keep having these conversations, but then we keep getting caught in these like deeper kind of washouts or, or however this terrain was changed. Um, you know, all this looks dead ass smooth on satellite. So we're like, yeah, we got this. And then, you know, you go through one section and, and uh, it, it becomes quite hard. Come on, baby. Yeah, at this point, I'm asking quite a bit from this BMW 1250, which also has TKC 80s on it uh, that were like halfway smoked when I got it. So, you know, uh. they struggle a little bit. Um, I really don't like TKC 80s. Oh, boulder shit. Nope. Okay. Just fatigue setting in and stopping off camber. <sighs> lift with your back. Don't. <laughs> Don't lift it up properly. Just lift with your back. <sighs> Trying to keep a visual on everybody. Josh is way out there. Matt's over here. This is all impassable. So at this point, we, we found like a bunch of stuff that you couldn't get through. And so like when we we split up kind of, but like just to head north, because <laughs> we figured Matt. that maybe terrain would be a little bit smoother out there. But I mean, now at this point, we're a quarter mile apart from each other at least. I can barely see Josh. Um, and we're just trying to find an easier route out. So we're starting to get a little panicked. Um, you know, things are a little weird. I think I got the best route going, so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, you know, I see Matt hustling his way with his tiger. 
And then, uh, you know, these boulders like this, they, they really eat up and beat up oh, an adventure boy. bike. And now I've got nothing to do but continue to head north to try to meet back up with my friends. We're now, you know, up to a half a mile apart. These little recovery techniques to like get the bike moving a little bit and, and ride it make a big difference. Yeah, now we're, we're really starting to struggle here. And we're just mountain goat everywhere, like, you know, no track, no trail. And here I come into the boulders and it's just gonna get worse. Okay. Fucking fuck. And I mean, you can hear my frustration, but I'm trying to keep it cool. Because with adventure bikes, like, man, it's easier if you let the bike do the work. But at some point, like, heading into these boulders, man, it's a bad, bad decision, Ooh. bad move. But, like, we're in no man's land. So you got to make sure that, like, all your moves are really specific and, and powerful. You know, you want smooth forward progression here. So as you can see, the rear tire's like dug in a little bit. So I'm like, all right, I'll just smooth out the front a little bit. And I mean, like moving these couple rocks doesn't make the biggest difference as far as the overall ride, but getting that little bit of momentum so you can start moving, slip the clutch a little bit and then stand up on the foot pegs. And I am by no means a professional rider, but that's the kind of stuff that really helps. Uh, frustrated and stuck. Not a good combo. You know, throughout all this, um, Matt was about a three quarters of a mile out and uh, he started coming back for me. Stay there, Matt. Yeah, him riding into this, it just really broke this stuff. So I start getting myself out, start getting some momentum. Oh, I'm out of that. Just, just a lot of light. Like they almost sound like they're quartz, made out of quartz. The little boulders or something, because they're they make like cool noises when you kind of toss them around. But the any bike doesn't go over these easy. So like I mean, when people are like, oh, you would have been better off on this or that. Like there's really no. I mean, I would have been more comfortable on a smaller bike uh, as far as an adventure bike goes. You know, I got that nine gallon gas tank out in front, so it feels intimidating. But I mean, this BMW did everything I, I asked it. it to do. Matt's spotting for me like I'm a trials rider. Finding me a clear way out. This has been kicking the shit out of me. We're 22 minutes in. I'm gonna pause, get another beer. I'll be back. Okay. Come on, big girl. All right, here we go. Back to our regularly, reg, reg, regularly, regularly scheduled program. All right. Thanks, man. Holy shit. It's also amazing how much abuse that BMW clutch took. Like when people think like, oh, like don't abuse your clutch, like it's a wear item, you'll wear it out. Dude, that bike took a oh. beating. I think we're gonna die out here. I didn't really say it, but the reason that we stopped at the family dollar was to get some uh, get stop leak because I smashed the front rim in the day before with Josh, but also, um, we got water there and I slammed like 
a liter of water before we left. And I, I think that liter of water is the reason that I did so well on this day. Uh, because I was doing better than everybody else as far as fatigue goes. And I really think that that has to do with just choking around. I slammed like probably more than a liter of water. At this point, we're all met back up and we actually sent Matt out to go scout a little bit. He's got a Dunlop 606 uh, rear tire on his bike. So he's got a little bit more grip. Okay. So I'm following his tracks right now, and then I'm trying to see which way he goes. Now, see how that looks completely flat? Well, this is it when you get up close. You're like, oh, shit, I'm in this, like, and again, another, like, washout or something. Now, I can see the tracks that Matt took up. Uh, no big deal. So I think, like, all right, I'm just going to ride up this, too. And it's here? really, really steep. Jesus Christ. Uh, and I kind of blew the beginning of it. So, you know, just a lack of traction. I'm like, all right, I'll get up that, you know, later rather than try to wrestle my way up it like and spin out and really fuck the bike up. I just took a breather and did some hill recovery techniques. Fuck you. Uh, my hill recovery oh, techniques are from uh, Bill Dragoo's school. Uh, he runs Dart. Um, I always take all the training schools that I can get my hands on uh, and then watch Josh do this fake-ass run to come help me when I'm like, hurry up. I'm still, my leg is still under the bike at this point. Josh is walking towards hurry me. Hurry up, man. Look at that fake run. He took one step yeah, to come out. Yeah, just don't want the oil to leak into the case. Oh, here, let me step a little faster. I got out. <laughs> he's, he's smoked at this point. Like, he's really beat up. Uh, one, you know, Josh two, has had heat, uh, okay. heat poisoning or heat exhaustion one, before. And that makes you susceptible to heat exhaustion. So, so that's why Josh is actually concerned at this point. Like Josh is pretty much overheated again, and we're trying to keep him like you know together. And it's it's actually quite hard to do. over here yeah sometimes picking a better line is the way to go um, at this point we're starting to come out there's a dry lake bed over there to the left that you'll see that like is kind of a landmark on the satellite but to our right is still Stonewall Mountain that what you see is not it but that's what we're going to try to skirt like in that lake bed area um, and things that we thought we could do on Google Maps just turned out to be this, which, I mean, there's really no reason for me to play four hours straight of us getting our asses handed to us, but that's what pretty much happened. This ain't bad. I didn't quite get to the road yet, but... So we're coming up on a road here, um, according to the maps. And so we're starting to get excited, and then we're like, oh shit, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna live. Um, but what we don't talk about is once we go down this road, we hit another fence. At that fence is a sign that says Air Force property or property of the U.S. Department of Defense. Trespassers will be treated as terrorists and shot or something. So that means the other two gates at the beginning of the video that were like, you know, just they were normal open and please close cattle gates. Um, that means that this area that we went through, the Air Force deemed impassable by normal human beings and didn't see it as a threat to mark it as private territory or whatever they want to want to call it. So when we get to this road, we go down and then we go through this fence and then oh, on the oh, other side of the fence, it says property of the U.S. Air Force. And we're like, holy shit. Like, oh, it's a road. I guess. Thank God. So we could have invaded, oh, we could have invaded the Air Force uh, from an air direction they never thought was possible. But it's, it's possible, just... Oh. Only with these high-level guys are dirt bikes. Which way do we take it, boys? Well, I'm assuming left. Well, you don't want to do the route? <laughs> it's four. It's 420 now. No, 220. <laughs> what did that take us, four hours? Yeah. Yeah, four hours. 
You know, you know, a little two track like this never looks so good. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we're out of water. We had a couple of granola bars that uh, Kate packed us. We ate all those. Some beef jerky we ate until you, know, you can only have so much sodium when you don't have water. So here's us cruising out of here, just kind of like, thank God this road. And we're going to make it back to the highway and then. We're just going to abandon that route and rescout everything tomorrow. So um, this route option, this is a day of route scouting that went so bad that we can never recover it. Um, and here we come into this dry lake bed. Always, always time for a little bit of fun. You know, bust a couple wheelies, have some fun. There's little dry lake beds like this all over uh, Nevada. And, uh, you know, still got to have that fun, man. Even after, even when you're exhausted, it's still time to pull some wheelies and do some donuts and stuff. I mean, the TKC didn't want to hook up that good, but still, like, pick up the front end on that big 550-pound BMW. And, you know, that motor, that shift cam 1250 motor is a freight train. That bike will do, like, third gear stand-up wheelies at, like, 90 if you just bounce it and whack it open real hard, which is hysterical, to say the least. Yeah, so we have some fun around in here, you know, even though Josh has heat exhaustion, he still tries to pop a little baby wheelie, and then we get moving. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, fun for me to try to integrate this video into some sort of shareable content that makes sense. This was the best way for me to, to figure that out. And I really enjoyed actually commentating on my video. We'll see if I enjoy editing it um, and dropping my stupid self down in that picture. But um, yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, it's a three beer kind of video. And, uh, you know, maybe pre-game with one, so maybe, maybe make it four. Happy quarantine, everybody. Stay safe. Whew. I'm tired. I don't know if I... I don't know if that slide off the camera worked. Because I got my stupid headphones on. Uh, we'll just, we'll just do the... I'm... Whew, I'm tired. Oh God, let's see what this looks like. The thing is, is like, what do I do with all that footage now? Like just publish it as like the, like a different video. It's like the day everything went to shit and we can't even share these tracks with you because apparently we're on restricted Air Force yeah. <laughs> installations, but they never thought anybody would come from that fucking direction, probably. Yeah, they didn't put any fucking signs there. Dude, I would have a hard time getting through there on a dirt bike. Yeah. Hey, Matt, you might want to fix your goggle strap, bro. What's wrong with my goggle strap? It's a little low, dude. Is it low? A little bit. What's that? Yeah, perfect. Diddle. I want a diddle Steve's phone. Diddle Steve's phone. Yay, look it. Stop touching my phone, dude. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Stop touching my phone, dude. <laughs> Oh man, you good over there, bro? If you had to ride over that rock, you wouldn't have had a problem. What? Just go pee, dude. What are you afraid someone's gonna see your giant pecker? <laughs> Just gonna make like lines in the sand. <laughs> this is the worst spot to stop. What? You would need a freaking satellite to see that thing from here. No pressure. You having a hard time going? <laughs> Think of the ocean. We gotta get around that mountain, right? That mountain, I think so. It's been real and it's been fun. But it ain't been real fun. Ain't. But not real fun. <laughs> ah, shit. Battery level is low. Battery level is low. Recording. <laughs> hey, we found a road! Woo!